Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1982 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Boston Red Sox and the Detroit Tigers at Tiger Stadium. On the mound for the Red Sox is Mike Chris, whose record is 2-1 with a 3.69 ERA. And pitching for the Tigers today is Bruce Robbins, whose record is 3-4 with a 5.71 ERA. Okay, we won a game yesterday that we should have won, and we almost didn't. We won 6-5, to five, pulling it out uh, late in the uh, baseball game. Kirk Gibson hit his ninth home run and also had a double in that game. He was uh, not the player of the game, though. The player of the game went to Alan Trammell, whose uh, two-run single tied up the ball game late. Uh, and then uh, it was a Whitaker uh, ground ball that scored the go-ahead run. Uh, Brian Kelly got his first career win in relief, and uh, Dave Rucker uh, had his 11th save, uh, and he's yet to blow a save. So good job by him. We move along to, now to uh, the Red Sox, who come to Detroit. We have a pair of left-handers on the mound, Mike Chris, former Detroit Tiger, facing Bruce Robbins. We also have the robot race uh, in the seventh inning stretch today. We have Douglas B versus Dave K uh, in this Elite Eight matchup. So we have that to look forward to. Let's go ahead and get started with today's game. Um, as always, I appreciate everyone following along, like, and or subscribe. Later on tonight, uh, we will have a, a new Time Travel Tuesday. I know it's not Tuesday, but I got my product late in the week. So I got a couple packs of 1982 Fleer Team Football cards. Uh, very cool. Uh, can't wait to open them up. And we're going to do that later on tonight. So look forward to that video. And uh, as you can see here, the bullpen is completely available today. Bruce Robbins, who's been incredibly bad. Uh, the Red Sox are batting 368 against him this season. So I don't like those odds. But we keep going to the well with Bruce. Hoping that maybe one of these starts will be good. Mike Chris is a lefty for the Red Sox. We traded him to Boston uh, at the beginning of last season. And you can see here our lineup versus lefties. It's what you've come to expect. We've moved Trammell to first. We've got Wagner playing short. Guy Solars is at third base. And Mickey Hatcher will be the DH today. And uh, everybody else you recognize. Okay, let's go ahead and do the lineup rundown for the Red Sox. Batting leadoff, playing second base, is Marty Barrett. Batting second in center field is Fred Lynn. Batting third at third base is Wade Boggs. Batting cleanup in right field today is Yvonne Calderon. Batting fifth in left field is Jim Rice. Batting 6th at first base is Dave Stapleton. Batting 7th and DHing is Clint Hurdle. Batting 8th and catching is John Stearns. And finally, batting ninth, playing shortstop today is Rick Burleson. Okay, Bruce Robbins. Let's take a look at his log. He did get a victory his last time out. He pitched okay against Baltimore. Uh, he went six innings, gave up three runs, seven hits, four Ks, a couple of walks mixed in there. So <clears throat> um, a below average performance, but good enough to get the victory uh, at Memorial Stadium. This is the fourth time that he's faced Boston this year. He had a no decision. He had a loss and another no decision. So he's 0-1 in three opportunities and... I will take a no decision if we can get a victory in the end. Let's uh, take a look at the Tigers' defensive alignment. As you see there, we are better at third base with Guy Solars. Trammell at first looking pretty good. Actually better defensively than Greg Brock. Uh, but we are a little bit weaker at short with Mark Wagner. And we've got Kevin Bass out there in right. Maybe we'll uh, pinch, uh, put in, uh, what's his name, uh, Eddie Miller in right for defensive purposes later in the game. Here is Marty Barrett, 0 for 4 against Bruce Robbins. 
leading up the ball game today. And he pops it straight up past the pitcher's mound. Play is made by Wags. One down. Next up is Fred Lynn. Lynn, a left-hander, hits lefties pretty good. Batting 286, and he rips it into right field for a hit. Bass gets it in quickly. Holds Lynn to a single. Next up is Fre uh, Wade Boggs. I almost said Fred Lynn again. As Boggs flies out to left. In the top 10 in batting average. Batting 323 after that flyout. And Yvonne Calderon. He's uh, part of a platoon. Where he plays primarily against left-handers. He flies out to right. And Robbins gets through the first. We go to the bottom half. Let's go ahead and do the Tigers lineup rundown. Batting leadoff and playing second base is Sweet Lou Whitaker. Batting second in left field is Ricky Henderson. Batting third in DHing is Mickey Hatcher. Batting cleanup and catching is Lance Parrish. Batting fifth, playing first base, is Alan Tremel. Batting sixth in center field is Andre Dawson. Batting seventh in right field is Kevin Bass. Batting eighth, playing third base, is Guy Solars. And batting ninth, playing shortstop, is Mark Wagner. Former Tiger Mike Chris gets the start today for the Red Sox. You'll see here he did... Uh, pitch in the playoffs last year in the uh, ALCS after making uh, just two starts during the season where he was pretty much lights out. This year he's making his sixth start. Injuries have kind of forced him into the rotation. 2-1, 369 ERA, 14 walks and 25 strikeouts in 39 innings pitch. Opponents are batting 238 against him. He does have a complete game. His fastball tops out at round 92. And that is his out pitch, rated at 89. He's got a slider that's above average and a curveball that's close to being average. So really a three-pitch starter. Why did we trade him? Well, we got Carlton Fisk. We got Bob Stanley. Uh, and we got Gary Hancock, all who are now have moved on to other teams. So there is the Red Sox defensive alignment. You've got Burleson and Fred Lynn, who both have won. Uh, gold gloves. Okay, so Sweet Lou leading off versus the left-hander Mike Chris. Lou crushes lefties, batting 329 in a little bit of a slump since his home run barrage. As he grounds out to second, Barrett makes the play, one down. Next up is Ricky Henderson. Henderson's our cover boy on our title card today. I thought maybe if I gave him some flowers, maybe we would uh, get a performance out of him. It's above... His normal 0 for 4 as he pops out, making me think no. Ooh, and then Mickey Hatcher has a corner painted on him. And he strikes out looking. 1, 2, 3 inning for Mike Chris. We go to the top of the second. Jim Rice, Hall of Famer, leading off, popping it up as Robbins jams him inside. Plays made by Solars. One down. Next up is Dave Stapleton. Stapleton hits a line drive to the left. His uh, great defense and, and uh, strong offensive season so far has put Jason Thompson into the minor leagues. He's in uh, AAA as uh, Clint Hurdle steps in as a left-hander facing Robbins and flies out to right. So Thompson can't even get in a bat in the majors anymore. And that's the third out. We go to the bottom of the second. Lance Parrish, Trammell, Dawson coming up. Big wheel leading off the inning. The base hit up the middle. Tigers first hit of the day. So you know we're going to hit and run with Trammell. Trammell betting 271 versus right-handers. And a base hit up the middle. Will Parrish go to third? He doesn't. Didn't get off to a good start, so he couldn't uh, couldn't take third. And now we've got Dawson up. Dawson had the day off yesterday. He's been absolutely horrible. We're going to let him swing away. 
And a ground ball that's likely a double play. It is. That's a 4-6-1 double play. I don't know why the pitcher had to cover on that double play. But Parrish is at third for Kevin Bass. Also in a mini slump. Oh, he walks to get to Solars, who's one for 10 as a Tiger, batting 173 overall, and he grounds out to second. So we're gonna strand two, go to the top of the third. We'll remember the second inning as an opportunity missed. As uh, Robbins walks, bad dude, John Stearns, first walk of the ball game. Even with Robbins, 95 mile an hour fastball, he doesn't strike out very many. I don't know why that is. As he strikes out Rick Burleson, that was good timing. There's the first K. One down. And a potential double play as Barrett hits a ground ball to Whitaker. 4 6 3. That's more traditional. You go to the bottom of the third, no score. We've got Wagner. Then back to the top of the lineup with Whitaker and Henderson. Look at Wagner batting 423 versus left handers. 432 overall. As Wags grounds to his counterpart, Burleson at short, one down. Sweet Lou up next. Did that fall in? It does fall in. In front of Calderon for a base hit. So runner on first. What's his stolen base percentage? 62. So we're going to say no. We're going to let Ricky swing away. And a base at the center field. Everything's going right back up the middle. We are... Oh, no. We're not going to... We're not going to run on Fred Lynn. Three-time gold glove winner. That's a no. We've got first and second. One down. And our best hitter, Mickey Hatcher, up. Hatcher batting 350 versus left-handers. And he hasn't walked once versus a lefty. He's got three walks on the season so far. He flicks it to right into right center field. Whitaker should tag on that. They're sending him. A little bit of a risky play with two down. But Whitaker's safe at third. First and third for Big Wheel. We need a clutch hit. Base hit up the middle. That'll score Whitaker. RBI single, of course, Henderson doesn't take third. So first and second, here's Tram. Tram had the big hit yesterday, as I mentioned, two RBI single. Wow, they call that ball four, easily could have been strike two. To load the bases for Dawson, and maybe that's a good idea. You intentionally walk Trammell to get to the worst hitter in the American League. Oh, it's a base hit to left. No. Oh, no, it's going to be caught. Oh, come on. I thought for sure he had a little topspin volley on that one. But instead, it's a line out to left. Tigers take the lead on the uh, base hit by Parrish. It's one nothing. Here's Fred Lynn leading off the top of the fourth. A grounder to Solars. One down. Next up is Boggs, and there's a hit for Boggs. First hit against Robbins in his career, now one for seven. Runner on first, here's Yvonne Calderon. Calderon, ground ball to third, that cannot turn two. Yvonne Calderon has a higher speed by seven points than Ricky Henderson. Thought I'd point that out. Oh, Rice sends it to deep center field. Is that gone? Oh, it's going to fall right at the warning track as Dawson tracks it down. One foot short, 439 feet. And uh, Tigers maintain the lead. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Kevin Bass leading off. Another grounder up the middle. This time it's snagged by Barrett. One down. Here's Guy Solars, another weak ground ball. This time to short, and Burleson, the gold glove winner, boots it. 
Solaris is safe. And uh, we're going to let Wagner swing away. I was thinking about making him sack bunt. He's got a few of those this season. I think three or four. Uh, flies out to center. Two down. And a chance here for Lou to keep the two-out rally going. No. Ground ball to second. And we go to the top of the fifth. All right. So this is when Robbins usually starts to struggle. Now he's only thrown 43 pitches. We have Stapleton, Hurdle, and Stearns do up. Stapleton three for five and he walks him. Three for five in his career against uh, Robbins. So two walks now for Robbins. This is This feels bad. Yep, base at the center for Hurdle. A 206 hitter versus left-handers, and um, I would be smart to pull him out right now. We're going to pull the outfield in. This is a double play possibility, though, with the catcher and uh, Clint Hurdle on first. That's a deep fly ball to center. Stapleton, I'm sure, will tag. Oh, he holds! Wow! That keeps the double play intact. And, uh, and now it could be any base. Rick Burleson up. Ground ball to third. There we go. Step on third. Throw it to first. Boom. 5-4-3. They go around the horn. We'll take the double play any way we can get it. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Ricky Henderson leading off. How Henderson is batting 254. I'll never know as he strikes out swinging. He has got to be the most garbage time player we have getting base hits late in the game when it doesn't matter. Hatcher goes 0 for 3 today. And then that's going to bring up Parrish. He's got two of the five Tiger hits, including the RBI. And he strikes out on a nice curveball for Chris. We go to the top of the sixth. We're going to flip it over to the in-game stats. Player of the game so far is Parrish, obviously. Uh, of course, a little nod to Bruce Robbins, potentially. As he's going to face a righty and two lefties. So we're going to give him a shot here. Barrett 0 for 6 with a walk. And there's the first hit. All right. Next up is Fred Lynn. Lynn hits lefties well. We said it before. We'll say it again. Ground ball to second. Is that going to be two? No, they only get the runner at first. As Barrett takes second. We're going to let him face Wade Boggs, and then we'll see where we're at. Uh, he pumps it pretty deep into right center field. 292 feet, not deep enough for Barrett. This is where we're taking up Robbins. And we're going to bring in a right-hander. We're going to bring in Tom Hume. And I'll show you why. Splits. Right-handers are only batting 244 against him. So he handles him pretty well. He does get lefties out decently as well. So he is overused. He's thrown thir 36 innings uh, so far this season. Calderon is 0 for 1 against him. We just need to get him out right here. Nope. Base at the center. Now I'll tie it up. And then Calderon gets thrown out stealing second. So that'll uh, cost Robbins the victory. As uh, that the one run given up goes on Robbins' slate. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. There's Trammel leading off. I guess Mike Chris has some extra incentive today to pitch well. He's had 81 pitches into the sixth. Andre Dawson, I have to believe that at some point his season's going to kick in and he's going to start producing for us because otherwise, between our terrible trade for Henderson last year and for Dawson this year, we have got nothing uh, out of giving up some quality players. Jim Rice is going to face Tom Hume here in the top of the seventh. Base hit to center. Six hits now for the Red Sox. And we do have the uh, robot race. 
uh, at the end of this half inning. Stapleton popping it up to short. The lone lefty in the bottom of the lineup. Here's Clint Hurdle. And as I said, he does get lefties out pretty well as Hurdle flies out to center. Dawson makes the play. And finally, John Stearns. On the 84 mile an hour fastball, Jim Rice steals second base. That is Rice's first stolen base of the season. He had three all last year. And you know that means a base hit's coming up. And there's nothing you can do about it. Two to one, Boston. Oh no, it was caught. I thought for sure that was gonna drop in in front of Bass. Hey, we'll take it. We go to the bottom of the seventh. We're gonna deal with a little bit of a robot race. Uh, I accidentally said that Don T had won yesterday when it was clearly John M. That's my bad. We got John M moving around, uh, uh, moving on to the final four. Today's Elite Eight race is Douglas B versus Dave K. Douglas beat Diamond Princess. Dave beat Freddie C uh, earlier, <coughs> excuse me, this season. And uh, whoops, here's the robot race. Let's close that out. So we have 45 seconds on the clock. We have Dave, he's the little robot, listed number two. We got Douglas B, the robot with lips, which is kind of concerning. And uh, we have 45 seconds on the clock. We're going to go into super full screen mode. And as always, we're gonna count down from three and we'll get this race kicked off. Good luck to Dave and or Douglas. Three, two, one, meow. All right, Douglas, moving ahead. He's on a bicycle wheel. He is a piece of electronics running on a simple bicycle wheel. That doesn't make sense. Uh, Dave K strutting along. Looking pretty steadily, feeling pretty happy. He's got like a double pump with his uh, right arm there. Take a look at it, bump, bump. There we go. Uh, everyone's kind of falling back. Maybe they're pacing yourselves here with 13 seconds to go. Douglas got the jazz, the jazz hands going. You can't really see his other hand on the other side. He's keeping, is he rolling his wheel? Oh, Douglas B coming out of nowhere. Oh, wow, I did not expect that to happen. What is he doing with his right hand? Where's his other hand? That's the question. He's not even all there, yet he wins the race. Congrats to Douglas. That was a good race. We're going to uh, go and add Douglas here to the next round. And uh, the as uh, it's taking a moment here to load, let's go. What's the deal? There we go. Sorry about that. As Douglas B moves on. Tomorrow we got Tony A versus Russ H. And then we'll finish up the series with Jeremiah M and Alan B. And then we're going to be right down to the final four. Okay, so we have Mike Chris at 88 pitches here in the bottom of the seventh. Guy Soulars. We'll lead off the inning. Can't buy a hit. There we go. Base hit. Past Barrett at second. And uh, this is definitely a sack bunt situation. Something that Mark Wagner has been successful at. He even had a uh, suicide squeeze as he lines out to first. I guess he was due to have a bad one. A bad game overall. Now 0 for 3 today. Ground ball by Lou. That'll move Solaris to second. And it's going to be up to Ricky to drive in the run. And as predicted, he flies out to right center field. We go to the top of the eighth. Uh, Hume has already gone an inning and a third. We're going to take him out. And we are bringing in... Roger Weaver, who is our 
sometime closer. He's got a couple righties, <coughs> excuse me, and a lefty. 31st game, his ERA is under 2 now. He is 0 for 4. He does have one bluey against his eight saves. Um, he has more strikeouts than walks, and that is uh, an improvement for sure. And opponents are batting 191. So he's getting the job done. His splits are nice. Righties are batting 169, and lefties are batting 220. So very impressive. He's going to have to face Rick Burleson. Back to the top of the lineup with Marty Barrett and then Fred Lynn. Burleson betting 3.55. Oh, come on. Weaver walks him. Runner on first for Marty Barrett. We're going to pull the corners in. Barrett's got a 98 bunt rating. Yep, he's putting it down. There's Solars. That's why he's in there. Good bunt by Barrett as Burleson is safe at second. And now we've got some lefties, and I can't, in good consciousness, let him pitch. He does get lefties out well, but we got to play the odds. We're going to bring in our pitcher who gets lefties out, and that's Cappy. Capizello, lefties are batting 180 against him. Even our lefty closer, Rucker, uh, struggles getting lefties out. So this is our best option. As uh, Fred Lynn does hit lefties well, so it is Boggs. So this will be a test for Cappy. And there's nothing we can do about it. we got to walk him to get to Boggs. Maybe get a double play. Now we got to pull the infield in. So either a double play or this run's going to score. Yep. It's fucking bullshit. But what are you going to do? And Lynn advances. Uh, all the fly balls to center field, and no one advances. And yet, a fly ball to left field. And that will probably sink us as Calderon flies out to right. We go to the bottom of the eighth. It's a two to one game. Tigers, for some reason, cannot hit a pitcher who's got no major league experience. Hatcher 0 for 4 on the day. As he grounds out to short. This is one of his worst games. Lance Parrish up next. Hasn't had a home run in probably a month and a half at least. As he gets his third hit. He's easily player of the game. Um, okay, so we've got to take Parrish out. And bring in a speedy guy. Do we bring in Miller? Who's a 90? I mean, we do bring in Miller. That's who we bring in. It's not going to be Gibby. And then Bobby Ramos will take over in the ninth. So Miller on first. Uh, what is this stolen base? It's 71%. Not great. Chris is a lefty. Somehow at 104 pitches, he is not tired yet. We're going to hit and run with Trammell. Now he's tired. And he nubs it right back to Chris. So, Miller is in scoring position for the worst hitter in Major League Baseball. Is he due? Yes. And he pops it up. We're going to the ninth. Oh, it's dropped! It's like a foul ball! As Dawson is safe on the fielding error by the catcher, Stearns. It's first and third. And now it's going to get to Kevin Bass. Keeping Chris in there at 113 pitches. That's so dumb. And a base up the middle. Unbelievable. We'll take it. Uh, we're going to hold Dawson at second. He can score his just as easily from second as he can from third. Now we've got to take out Guy Solars, right? We can't let him hit. We have a chance to win the ball game. Um, now, versus lefties, I mean, we've got nobody. So, I mean, we're going to bring in Ramos anyway, but he doesn't hit lefties well this year. So, we are not. We're going to let Solars hit. I mean, he can be a hero right here. 
to be here for just for one day. That's not it. But. Nope. Instead, he's like Ant-Man. We go to the top of the ninth. It's tied at two. Tiger's tied up on the base hit by Bass. That was clutch. And here we are in the ninth inning, and we're going to bring in Brian Harvey. Brian Harvey. Brian Kelly. We do have Brian Harvey in the uh, single A. We're going to bring in our last right-hander. Harvey got Harvey. Kelly got the win yesterday. His first major league win. So he's on a high right now. He might actually be high. As he faces Jim Rice. Slow roller to second base. Oh, I have... I do not have a catcher in there. I have Eddie Miller. So we're going to move Miller to right. We're going to put Ramos, the catcher. Prevent any more stupidity. Dave Stapleton up next. Ground ball to third. Solaris stayed in there. And his defense helps us out. And now it's Clint Hurdle. Kelly's got a jump hurdle to get to the bottom of the ninth. And Hurdle pops it up into out, uh, shallow outfield, center field, for the third out. So Tigers actually have a chance to walk it off. They're going to have to do it versus Eck. And uh, Eck actually has been hittable. He's 5-1 in relief. He is their closer. He's got 11 saves and 14 opportunities. 20 Ks and 28 innings pitch. He puts up a 241 against him. Um, he's a side armor. So you look at him and that 89 fastball uh, it doesn't seem like much, but he's catching it at a lower angle. That is his out pitch. He's got a good curveball at 81 rating and a slider mixed in just below average. And now we can start going to the lefties. Sorry, Wags. You had your chance. We're going to bring in uh, Reggie, who loves Dennis Eckersley. He's 0 for 3 against him with 2 Ks on the season, or his career. And Jackson comes through with a base hit. All right, Red J. We're going to set him down. We're going to bring in uh, Gibby to run for Red J. There we go. So we got a little bit of speed at first. Good job by Reggie. And this is a hit and run situation with Sweet Lou. And Gibby gets picked off. Lou lines out to left. There's two down. We're going to get some free baseball, folks. And Reggie, uh, Ricky pops it up. Okay, so I just wasted a bunch of players. For nothing. Nothing. Let's take a look at the defense. Um, okay. So we're moving Trammel to short. And we are putting Greg Brock at first. Where he belongs. Okay. So there is our defensive alignment. Wow. Look at that infield. Three over 90 can't get anything here to fall in on the left side of the infield all right so Kelly he's got a couple right he's got to go one more inning which is always bad we do not like sending starters out for a second inning as Stearns gets jammed inside and he pops it up into right field that is Miller in right now one down here is Rick Burleson Burleson flying out to center field. Kelly's got a 95 mile an hour fastball. I'd like to see more strikeouts from him. This is a team that makes a lot of contact as he walks Barrett. And now we've got the lefties up. I'm gonna let I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna let Kelly face Fred Lynn. No, I'm not. Am I? Hmm. Hmm. We got two lefties. Um, no, that would be stupid, right? I mean, we have bullpen people. So we're going to bring in our boy, Dave Rucker. Now, Rucker doesn't 
He, I mean, he gets lefties out good enough, but he actually gets righties, uh, righties out so much better. We're going to give him a chance here. Uh, he's yet to give up a home run this year. I'm saying it out loud. Let's see what he can do here versus Fred Lynn. Lynn betting 288 versus left-handers. And he pops it up to shallow center field. Plays made by Dawson. And we go to the 10th, bottom of the 10th. Eckersley's still in there. He's going to face Hatcher, Miller, and Tram. Hatcher having a bad day so far. Ground ball to first. He's 0 for 5. Not good. Then we have switch hitter Eddie Miller getting his first at bat. Striking out looking. And Trammell. Infield single to first. Trammell's got two hits on the day. Uh, we're going to try to steal. I mean, I mean, what, what's my option? Andre Dawson swinging away. 67% chance Trammell does have five stolen bases this year. He's five for eight. So it's not impossible. And Eckersley is a side armor. So, I mean, logically speaking, you'd think he'd have a chance. Here we go. No chance. We go to the 11th, and we were thrown on the base pass. So we know the uh, momentum is switched. As Rucker is going to have to get through another inning with us here. He's got a lefty and two righties. He gets the righties out well. He's got Wade Boggs. He's always a tough out. Popping it up to second. Whitaker camps under it. Here's one down. Next up is Yvonne Calderon. One for four with a ribby. He's got one of the two ribbies. Grounding out to Brock, who just came into the game. Two down. And Hall of Famer Jim Rice. This is a guy you do not want to mess with. He got his first stolen base earlier in the game. And he hits a line drive to short. I guess that was a line drive. A 1-2-3 for Rucker. Good job by Rucker. <coughs> Pardon me. Allergies, folks. Allergies. Okay, so here's Andre Dawson batting 201 versus right-handers. As Eckersley's coming in for the third innings pitch, he's not going to be ready for tomorrow's game. I guess we just care about today as Dawson... Flies out, no surprise. Another 0 for 5. Ramos up next. A little number back to Eckersley. Two down. And Guy Solars. 1 for 4 on the day. Fly ball to center. Yeah, that those three. <laughs> no chance whatsoever. We go to the 12th. We've got a righty. Two righties and a lefty do up. we got Stapleton, Hurdle, and Stearns. We need one more inning out of Rucker. And then we can bring in Comstock. And he's going to have to go the rest of the distance. Okay. So 0 2 count to Stapleton, and Rucker strikes him out. He does get right. He's out. It's impressive. Hurdle betting 219 versus lefties. I still think Rucker's got the advantage. Striking him out. Back to back case. Let's strike out the side and give him a what for. Bad dude up, though. Bad dude. Ground ball to Trammell. Playing short now. And that's going to do it. They're going to the bottom of the 12th inning. And they're going to bring in Tom Bergmeier, who would not even be in the majors if it weren't for, for all the injuries. We got, he's a left-hander. He's been in one game this season. He's pitched well, as you see here. Two and a third versus Texas. We have yet to play any of the teams in the West. Uh, let's see. So Bergmeier, veteran, 38 years old, and uh, a couple lefties here, Brock and Whitaker. So that's a good call by Boston. And he walks Brock. We've got nobody to pinch, run, or hit. Um, they're pulling the corners in because they think we're going to bunt, which we are not. We're going to let Whitaker swing away. That's 324. I think he's going to get the old guy a little some eh, base in the center field. There we go. Nobody out. Now we would bunt. I would like to get a bunt down from Henderson. Do something right. Get runners uh, moved over and then have Hatcher come through. 
in the clutch. Here's Ricky. Oh, no, 2-2 two -two count. Drops it right in front of the plate. And he gets the job done. There we go. Nicely done. So, now we have the infield pulled in, but it doesn't look like they're pulled in, does it? It looks like they're playing normal on this infield. Um, weird. And it says they're pulled in. So, we need a sack fly from Hatcher. Brock is going to be going no matter what. Oh, they're going to walk him. That's smart. That is smart baseball. Oh, okay. So that now that's why they were back. They were going to intentionally walk him anyway. They said they were bringing him in. So that, that makes sense now that they've walked Hatcher. And now it's Eddie Miller, the, one of the newest Tigers. Um, there's no go on contact here. Oh, well, they're going to, yeah, it's, bases are loaded. Okay, so a sack fly ought to be good enough from Eddie Miller. That ought to be the game winner. Deep enough. Fred Lynn, though. Ah, uh, Brock tagged up and scored. The Tigers are going to win. And Whitaker with the third for Laceworth. And the Tigers win 3-2. to two. That was a good game. Some free baseball, butt slaps, little uh, sloppy stakes afterwards. And a 3-2 victory simulating. So maybe there's a trade offer coming up. We'll see here. Uh, there is a trade offer. A big one by the first place Cincinnati Reds. The Reds, by the way, have the best record in baseball right now. Better than Kansas City. They're giving us nothing. They're giving us a Skeeter, an Eddie Milner, Milner not to be confused with Eddie Miller, Mike Grace, not even Mark Grace. They're going to give us Mike Grace and a catcher by the name of Jim Godet. For, uh, I mean, I would give up a bag of balls to get rid of Andre Dawson. We would save so much money uh, on that. I just don't want to give up Greg Brock. Because uh, uh, Andres Galarraga is not ready for the major leagues. And um, we're giving up two players rated in the 80s for one and some scrubs. Um, Eddie Miller, though. Milner. Let's just look at his scouting. Oh, he's got some speed. He's good defensively. He could be our fourth outfielder. Man, what would you do? I would, uh, I would, I'm actually interested in this. I mean, if I could get rid of Andre Dawson's payroll and get rid of his shitty bat, um, that might be worth it. Let's take a look at Skeeter Barnes. Sorry, I know this is an extra inning game, and maybe you're already uh, moved on. Skeeter Barnes, wow, batted 364 in limited duty, 385. He can play third. He can play first. Uh, he could be our new first baseman for Brock. I like Brock, though. We just named him and everything. It's like once you name a puppy, you can't give it away. Mike Grace. Mark Grace's brother. Um, no. And Jim Goodett. I mean, we don't need another catcher. He's the starting catcher. Oh, no, he hasn't played at all in the majors this year. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, I mean, I guess we're going to say no. Um, man, it's a tough call, though. I mean, you catch me on a different day, uh, I might say yes. Let's take a look at the transactions, and we'll close this baby up. Greg Harris, pitcher for the Mets. He is on their bench. He's going to miss a little more over a month. And Ed Whitson for the last place Giants. Fractures an eye bone. It's going to miss a month. Okay, let's pull up the box score and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. A nice little victory for the Tigers. Player of the game, probably Lance Parrish, right? He went. He got three hits. Uh, he didn't get the, the game-winning hit. Um, it wasn't even a hit. It was a sack fly. So we're going to give it to Lance Parrish. He went three for four today. Uh, Trammell went two for four. Pretty decent performance from him. Two caught stealings. On Gibby getting picked off was bad. Dave Rucker gets the win in relief. He goes to four and two. Good job by him. We might have to send somebody down uh, because we used up our bullpen. Um, so we might have to pull up somebody from the minors.
Uh, we'll see. Tom Bergmeier takes the loss in relief. The 38-year-old is now 0-1. And, and that's going to do it. We're going to come back tomorrow, play game two of the three-game series. Until then, everyone, have a great night.